Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Octoman and in this uh, live stream we're going to talk about the score systems or systems in general and how would you, would I go and, and construct them. So what is, a, what is the goal of a system? A system has to have or has to be um, has to stand on its own. For example, if we want to go and create a scoring system, we're going to literally create some kind of a container. Just think of that as going to be one part of our game. One container about one specific topic. And this, in our case now, is going to be the score system. So it gets a title, uh, like the script gets a title, and then we have uh, several different functions which are going to be inside um, our ex yeah, in our uh, little uh, system, no matter what kind of system that is. Hi, Aaron. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Um, so this score systems, or any systems in general, are going to be super important when when it comes to bigger uh, scope games for example we're gonna have some other system which is going to be like um just uh, simple game mechanics like for example uh moving the character is going to be literally a system in itself and so we want to make sure that the um, each of them systems are going to work on their own. And what is the good thing about it is, if you have multiple systems, like you have a quest system, you have a, a level up system, or you have this and that, whatever system you're going to create over here, these systems are going to be reusable. So, for example, our score system we are going to create today is going to be reusable, and we can use this at any place, at any in any project, and anything else. And this is what I try to teach. Um, and by the way, I got this request uh, in my Discord channel. So, if you want to follow up in Discord, please feel free to go down below in the um the description, and there is uh, my Discord channel. I gonna currently build it up so you can uh, do some requests and so on. So, if you have a request for a video or something or live stream or anything else or you want to learn new stuff or you want to contact other people want to contact me go down below in the video description and check out my discord channel just subscribe over there and then you can go and we can talk about things i try to help as best as i can um my time is limited but probably i can help you further down with your projects with something else and of course if it becomes too huge for me for my time actually then uh, you can hire me over there as well so feel free to follow up in the discord channel down below Okay, so, oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because a lot of people are not coming over here and following uh, this channel to learn new content about Unity. However, back to the topic. If you have a System 1, a System 2, a System 3, you have a third-person system, you have a, uh, a first-person system, you have multiple scoring systems and all the other good stuff, you can put them all into one project, like like see this one as being your project so you're gonna go later on to your i'm gonna call it library uh with the which is, should be for you as well i go into my library and say oh i created a scoring system already which probably i just need to rewrite this and that type of code something like that i'm gonna take this scoring system put this into my current project whichever it is and i reuse it if needed and if possible um, so keep that in mind that everything you create, even if it is a super small script, anything like, I don't know, camera effects, rumble, whatever, yeah, um, feel free to reuse them because it's for prototyping. It is absolutely crucial to become quicker as well as for all the other things like to become better. Like, uh, and to, to save time in the end, reusability is an absolute keyword over here. So, what do we need for a scoring system? Well, we need, well, for example, we need a player or anything else who can talk to the scoring system or even not. And uh, there's multiple possibilities for us to build one. And the scoring system itself is not as heavy as you probably think. Um, because it's literally just three functions, maybe four. And depending on what you need, as uh, like on top of that then you can go and extend this of course so first off let's go and uh, write some c sharp script i'm gonna name the score manager you can name this whatever you please and like totally up to you um 
wait for the compiler to be, you know, to run all this uh, scripting, blah, blah. And once that has happened and once it's done, gonna double click to open. Use uh, whichever coding language program stuff you want. Um, I need to trust well, the actual thing over here. You entered with two Discord with two accounts. Awesome. Uh, one is more than enough, actually. Um, so we have two possibilities to put our score manager together. There are two things. The first thing is we can make it static. So static means we just write in content and read content from it, but it is only temporary. We can also use that later on when we create a save manager, for example, like we want to save the score. Then you can take this information, put this into score manager or any other manager or any other pff, yeah, system, you call it, whatever it is. So this is what you need to decide how it is easier for you to keep track of things. And also it depends on um, do we have one active player or do we got multiple players. So this is basically the, the actual thing uh, you need to think of. You can also combine everything, of course. You can say, okay, I have like four players. They are literally in the list or something uh, like a simple class in which we want to store that information, for example, as well as we have the possibility to um, um, just use a single player score. Basically, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so... Let's assume this is going to be our score manager. What does a score manager, what should it do? Or what should a score system do? It just should take information about incoming score or redu reduction of score, like we need to take away something from a score. Let's start pretty simple. Just a, p a private integer variable. We just name it our, let's say, current score. We go for one character first, for one single player game, let's say. For example, you get score for shooting down a balloon or uh, hitting a button or whatsoever it doesn't matter so we're gonna uh, name this one maybe current score this is for single player stuff you don't need to give a, a, a number over here you can also say equal zero but it will gray out anyway so it doesn't matter so next one is we need a function which calculates the score whenever content whenever score comes in same vice versa when it goes out the easiest one for doing so, currently we are not using any statics. Just keep that in mind. We can later on go over statics. For, uh, but for the moment, we need functions. We need two functions. We They need to be public. Why do they need to be public? Because we want people or um other systems to talk to these functions to add the score, whatever is relative to this. For example, if you stumble upon a stone and you reduce your your score by one because you stumbled upon the stone, then you want to reduce it. As well as vice versa, you want to increase it when you, for example, collected a coin or anything else. Doesn't matter. So this is the, the, the basics of the setup. So public void, and then we can name it, uh, for example, add score. We can also name it calculate score. Basically, it's the same thing. Now, what is important is that this in this parentheses, we want to put some, um, well, what do we want to put in? Any argument, for example, some incoming score. Um, for example, an amount. You can name it whatever you please and like. So first, we need to say what is the type and then what is uh, the incoming something. So since we, I use currently integer here, I want to use an integer here over there. So what do we want to do over here is a pretty simple. We want to add to the current score the incoming amount. That's the simplest calculation you can think of, right? So we say amount plus equal, and then we put in plus equal need to be next to each other because it's called an operator. And then we want to add the amount like so. And now we, every time we now call the uh, actual add score function, we're going to add to it. If we put a negative number over here, we would reduce it. If, for example, if that is a negative number, we're going to say plus equal a negative number. Ha, Oscar, thanks a lot for tuning in. Oh my God, are you not working at the moment? Uh, Happy New Year, by the way, to all of you guys over there. So I hope you enjoy the next year, 2022. going to be pretty pretty interesting year, I believe so. Um, so yeah, keep on learning. 
and uh, go out and uh, do something. However, um, if we're going to add a negative account of, uh, or amount, we probably want to check if the score is actually over zero or over the uh, the current score is uh, at least bigger than the current amount. So we can not reduce under zero. If you don't want to go over to reduce the score. By the way, what you can also do is you can reduce a score by creating a get rid of score functionality. Like you're going to say you don't add it, but you remove score. It's the same thing. You can just literally copy this thing, control C, and we can say we want to remove score. So if you need multiple functions, multiple scenarios, going to use that. And in and, and here we're going to say, um, well, actually, we don't want to do amount minus amount. We want to take current score uh, plus amount or current score minus amount. So one or the other. Sorry about my phone. It's going to ringing me to death today. Anyway, this is what we're going to start with. We add a score to the current score and we remove score. It is all public, so we can talk to the functions, but we can never do a direct manipulation or manipulation about this current score over here. So, next thing is, um, if you want to do some calculation, for example, we want to read the score. What is my current score? So, we want to get an information about an integer or if about the integer current score. In that case, we build another public function just for reading or for getting the score. Because score systems need to know where and how and how much do we got and how less or what is missing, what is not missing, what is interesting, what's needed and so on and so forth. Um, and probably we need to go and compare one amount to the current score. So let's introduce these as well. So we have a public void and now we want to get current score. Get like for getting it from somewhere. Get current score. This is the easy way, by the way. We don't need to... Uh, I mean, we can also put in a constructor and stuff like that. I want to keep it simple. I want you to understand what the mechanics of the score systems are. Basically, that's what it is. It is nothing else than like four or five different functions. Probably sometimes as something a small different thingy-wingy here and there. But uh, like a different change or a different access point or something like that. So we want to read that. But instead of using that one as a void function, we want to have it an integer function. So an integer needs to return an integer when it is getting called. In that case, we can say we want to return the current score. Because that is what we want to request at this particular point. So we request an integer, so we return one. Hi! Uh, sadly, I cannot... <laughs> Cannot understand that your Arabic uh, name, but thanks a lot for tuning into this um, and feel free to join the Discord server as well if you like to. And I'm happy that you're watching my tutorials over here and hopefully you're going to learn something new every now and then. And if you have any requests and something like that, feel free to go into the Discord server as well and uh, yeah, put them into the corresponding, you know, thingy wingies over there. Hey, bitch here. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Yeah, long time no see. Uh, I'm fine. And will I introduce accents? No, I will not. I'm sorry about this. Um, I could also do this about events and stuff, but uh, I want to keep it simple, um, at least for this particular tutorial. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so, so what is... What is what is the issue over here? Um, or what what is the issue about actions? Basically, there there is no issue. It's so super, super literally super simple to understand, but it's too much for my rather short amount of time I want to invest over here and today for this particular one. Hi, Obi, Obi, what a name! Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. So, um. Once, once we're going to go uh, and have these information, we got the add score, we got the remove score, we got the get, we can get the current score. We can also compare or return if a score we need is already 
there. So we can do this like using the getting by getting the current score. This is usually something which we can use for user interface. For example, we read just the score and put this into uh, the UI anywhere. So uh, our UI system later on can read this by just getting the current score and put this into a text field or somewhere else. That's where we're gonna go and get the score for uh, from. But what we can also do is, does a score fit our one specific score? In that case, we would return a boolean. A boolean is just a true or false, and it just returns, uh, is that score reached, yes or no? So well, in, in that case, we want to say something like, is score... Uh, something like, is the score higher or something like that? So is score, let's say, reached? So what we want to do is we we need an argument. We need an argument of the amount to be reached over here. And now we need to return true or false. But how can we do this? Um, the best thing over there is we, we, we just compare it. And the cool thing is, instead of uh, putting like a big of if, else, if, else, something like that, we can also say, is that true or not? And so we can just uh, return... Uh, using an, a so-called expression. We can return something to be true or false based on a, an expression. And as a Boolean, it is super simple. So what we want to return over here, maybe something new for the uh, uh, a bit more advanced guys, I don't know. So what we can do is we can now compare and return literally if current score is at least bigger than the incoming amount, then we know we we can, we will automatically return true, or at least uh, if the current score is bigger or equal, literally, because we also want to have, like, if it is 2,000 points, if 2,000 points are reached or necessary, and we have 2,000 uh, especially, or just uh, 1%, then, of course, we want to make sure that the 2,000 points are going to be 1%ly reached. Uh, you are a fan of Thins 2K15? Oh my god, uh, that's almost where I started. I, I believe I started this channel in 2K13 or something. Oh my god, that's awesome. Um, so with that, four functions, nothing else. We can we can handle all any kind of a score, anything. I believe so. Maybe we need more or less here and there. I don't know. So what we can say is we can also. Um, for example, we can when we remove score, we want to protect current score. Let's address that. Hi, Mr. Ursus. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Oh my God, so my so many guys today. I believe I picked the correct timing today. So thanks, thanks for all the good words. Uh two K. 20 or yeah, 2022 probably becomes a good year. We'll see. Um, so what we now want to do is if the current score is smaller than zero, then we want to make sure that we that current score uh, will not change. Okay. So what we want to negate the amount, what we can do is we can put a simple if statement uh, over here. So everybody knows that probably already of you guys, because you probably are a bit more advanced and so on. Um, what does it mean is if our current score literally is smaller than, you know, or smaller or equal, actually smaller than zero, we want to set it to be zero. So we can say just simple current score is equal to zero. So this is the simple way, actually. Um, can we do, can we, can we simplify that? Yeah, probably we can. We can say current score modulo zero or actually modulo, yeah, probably. Hmm, let's see, think about it. Can we modulo that? Actually, modulo zero doesn't make sense. No, let's keep it uh, this way. So we want to reduce the current score by the amount. That's what we want to do first. Once we're done with that, we want to protect it. We want to say, we could, by the way, also clamp it. Clamp uh, one or uh, zero or one or something like that. But it doesn't make sense because we'd never know how high the biggest amount of score is going to be. So it's clamping in itself doesn't make sense either. So when we have reached some specific points, we can just say, okay, from a, let's say, you're going to go onto a specific game field or something like that, or any area, you're going to enter an area. You want to see um, 
if you have reached a specific score, then you can just read it or compare it to finish the level, for example. So you're gonna go visit some point or any anywhere in your game. You're gonna go and check is the necessary score reached the, the, the whatever the goal score is going to be. We can request it from the score manager with just by calling it. But that is now one thing. How do we talk to the score manager? And most of you guys probably know that already. We can create some kind of a uh, what is it called? Uh, a singleton design pattern, that's what they call it. Um, it's literally just a static um, access point to make everything, every, every, let's say, every function or every method, whatever you call it, um, accessible from outside, from wherever we want. So how do we do this? First off, it has to be a public static and now we take our score manager as being the actual accessor and then we give it a name. The name is going to be, at least for me, I'm gonna call it instance. So it's an instance of the score manager. What we want to do with that information, we later on can call scoremanager.instance.addScore and then we put in the score. But before we can do this, we want to put it into a wake. So we say void awake. Um, sadly, those are not auto-completing here, which is okay. So, void, awake, open, close parentheses, and now we can just simply say instance is equal to this. You want to make sure that you only have one instance of score manager in your scene, otherwise one, uh, but like if there are two, well, then you should delete one. There's another possibility to get rid of second, like if you by mistake or whatever, uh, you got another object in the scene which also contains score manager, then you want to make sure that you get rid of it. Just, yeah, search the scene and see. Um, otherwise, you can say you, you do something with the don't destroy and load, something like that, yada, 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 but you don't need it. Um, at least not for this particular case. Um, Later on, also when it comes to, to to temporary saving, you just put the score into a, a static integer. So you can take it from one scene to another without any don't, don't destroy and load stuff. You don't need it. Um, you just put a static, put in all the score over there. So literally the same thing. It just doesn't need to be static. Uh, no, not that. It doesn't need to be public, actually. So we just convert it. Or let's say when we reach the point over there, we just put it into anywhere. In, in a static member variable whatever and then it is good to go over there that's what we could do with all the systems here as well by the way um but but let's take a look at this one first so now we got our uh, instance of a score manager accessible from anywhere in the game let's try i'm gonna save this and go back to my system and go and let this one uh, do something for example if you are moving from field A to field B and you reached field B and you're done with that, you can read information from field B. For example, it is a note like in my snakes and letters tutorial series, which you can find on udemy.com. Just check out down below in the description as well. You're going to go from node A to node B. And let's say on node B, um, there is, um, let's say, a negative score then you can go after you're done with this one step. You go and read this information first from the node. Like, you know, from any other class, you just get the information. What is the necessary, or what is going to be on, on this particular node? For example, lose 10 score or lose 5 score or get 10 score. Then you read this information and put this into the score manager. The downside... Um, on our scenario here, it's currently only for a single player. Don't forget this because we just got one single score. If you want to make this one relative to multiple players, then each single player needs its own score, but the system is doing literally the same thing. But you do not put the uh, content directly into uh, the score manager, or you could, but you could also put it directly onto the player. So you just say, who is the player? You just extend the actual mechanic here, like uh, the actual argument, and say, um, what is your player ID? And then we're going to pass back to player ID. For example, if the players are inside the game manager or somewhere else, doesn't matter. Um, then you just put in, okay, who gets more score? And the score manager sends the information to the player. That's also possible. I'm going to show you another way also in a minute or two. 
Okay, so for example, we got something super simple. We make, I make, I make a uh, UI, uh, just a simple canvas system for that with some buttons because I don't want to put in uh, like anything uh, because it's not really necessary. Okay, so how does it work? Uh, by the way, this is uh, Unity 2021, so it doesn't matter which Unity version you're using, super simple, just do whatever you please. And like, I gotta put a, just a simple Text Mesh Pro button over there. Uh, I need to import the TMP pr essentials pretty quick. Um, I believe the other ones are gone. The old ones with the, in quotes, ugly text fields. Um, but that's it. So now we got a button and we can put in anything on this button. But what we also need is we need an object where our score manager is going to be on top. Because our current score manager, in the way it is, currently needs at least an empty game object where it is sitting on, like so. So we can talk to it. Otherwise, if that is now not in the scene, we cannot talk to it. So if I want to press this button to get one score or two or ten or whatever, and then we can read it and debug it and then all the other good stuff, we can talk by using the onClick event over here. We can talk to any function we want. For example, I'm gonna put uh, not the button on it, but this game object onto the button over here. Then we go to score manager and then we run anything we want. We can say we want to remove score. We can add score. We can also add negative score as I already said before. For example, we can add a score of 10. And whenever I now press this one button, I'm gonna get added to this 10 score. We can visualize that by going here to the debug mode. And what we're gonna do is, Oscar, I'm gonna tell, uh, talk to you later. Um, we can see current score here is going to be currently zero. I got, uh, I, I was going there over into uh, the debug mode, as I, as you have seen. If I now press this one button once, click, you're gonna see I got ten score. If I do this multiple times now, you can see now I have seventy. But the score is, of course, only temporary, so it's not stored anywhere. It's just temporary in the current workflow stuff. So with that set, everything is good to go, and we can add and reduce score whenever we want to. For example, we can create another button, which literally going to do the same thing. I could just control D this one, put this one a bit down. You can tint this, I don't know, into any other color. For example, red button. We want to lose score as an example. So in that case, I'm gonna go to this and say onto the on-click event, uh, I'd go out of the debug mode, so it's easier for me. We can say minus 15, for example, for this red button. It's basically the same thing as you go and stumble upon something negative. It's the same thing, but in this case, you don't do this. Put this on a button. You put this onto any game object which just, you know, talks to it. For example, you have a, you stumble upon something, you go into a collision, into a collider, then you're gonna go and call score manager instance. We're gonna talk about this in a second. So this is the simplest way, let's try that out. I go over to my game object pretty quick once again for the score manager system. I go here and change to debug mode again so I can see this grayed out number. If I now go press the red button, it goes into the negatives. Why does it do it? Well, uh, the add function does not have the protection for removing the content. Like if there's a negative number, it doesn't go and test if it is under zero. So don't yeah, don't be confused. If I now add 10 and no, again 10, then we are at the plus 5. We can add multiple. We have now 55 minus 15, we got 40. So this is the main mechanics. Same thing is later on, if you want to read information about it, about this gray uh, score number, you can do so. For example, if we don't go over and use something with buttons, which can be, for example, you touch a bomb, Okay, you, for example, there's a game you need to go super fast and click on uh, every specific, uh, I don't know, about something specific. You want to collect them or you have to touch them for something for score. And then there's a bomb and you're going to touch that like, like this button. You're going to add negative score. So far, so good. I hope you guys got this. I believe so. Super simple content. Let's assume we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move our object X or a cube. Uh, I just reset its transform. 
gonna double kick here. We're gonna say, okay, this is my cube, it has a collider, all that good stuff. And then we have something kind of a zone X, zone Y. Let me duplicate this once again. And I put one here, and I put another one here. What we need is a function which gets triggered from these collisions. First of these two, of course, what do they need? They need a rigid body component. Well, ah, uh, typos. We need rigid body components of them too. We want to deactivate gravity so they don't fall through. Uh, we can make them kinematic literally so they don't fall downwards, right? This one here, I later on in play mode, I just move this cube and see what's going to happen if we go touch this one or touch this one. How do we do this touch something? Um, basically, we need to create um, just a, a anything which is talking to or it gets information. For example, uh, I just name it score. This score can literally do the same thing. It catches information and it catches, for example, collisions. And then it talks to game manager, or in this case, a score manager, and talks to the corresponding functions. So, for example, if this object touches anything, whoever that is, we're going to tell this guy needs to get negative score. So, of course, it gets a bit more complicated sooner or later because, well, when you go have multiple players, you want to see who was the one who was talking to this one cube or to this one cube. So, with that kept in, or kept in mind, we're going to take now the score itself and open this. Uh, I'm going to wait for a second or two until everything, I believe so, has to be loaded. I'm going to get rid of start and update because we don't need them. Now we go literally just perform a rigid body, a rigid body uh, score scenario. For example, we need to create a function which is called on trigger. On trigger enter. That's the easiest one. On trigger enter. We don't really want to... Uh, currently we don't care who is going to enter us. But we need to put in a collider col. You can name this whatever you please. Now, I believe it was a collider. If not, yeah, it has to be a collider. Um, whenever something hits this trigger zone, whatever it is, whoever that is, we want to negate the score in the score manager. But how do we do this? We talk to the score manager dot instance and now we want to reduce or increase score so we can say we want to add score like so now we need to put in a, an amount but we don't have an amount on this object yet so we need to say we put in a public variable directly just for that particular object each of them objects can have hundreds of different score values let's say it's an integer and we can say this is my score it can be positive, can be negative, doesn't matter. Now we're going to pass in the argument my score. And that's it. If you want to be more precise, you want to go and of course check if it is the player, is it an enemy, is it whoever it is. Uh, you need to do the comparison and then you see do you need to talk to score manager and add it or not. So this is the same thing for reading score, like getting, comparing score if you reach the goal, uh, compare the score and so on and so forth. Now, on these two objects, we need to do one more thing, one more little change, because we're going to use on trigger function. So these two box colliders here need to be a trigger. So set it to be is trigger. And this one here, it's just, I just move this object from here to here and vice versa. Oh, and these two objects, by the way, of course, they need our score systems or our score script. And as you can tell, these two have multiple or different scores. So this one here maybe can have a negative score, negative 15, as we already had before. And this one here can give us a, a 10, a plus score. Of course, when that happens, we can get rid of this object so it doesn't trigger twice or 5,000 times whatsoever. And let's assume it's a jump and run game where, where these are coins. This is a bomb, uh, or this one is a bomb, and this one is a coin. And if you touch the bomb, you're going to lose score. If you touch a coin, you get score. Basically the same thing, the same scenario. And it doesn't matter. Is it 2D? Is it 3D? It does not matter. Because the system on its own is not relative to anything. 
because who cares, right? The objects themselves, they don't care who score manager is. They don't care about anything. So because, again, this is called, so-called, I believe so, it's called object-oriented programming. So I believe so. O O O O B, uh, O O P, ah, uh, whatever. You know what I mean. So they don't care about each other. They just talk to whatever object we tell it to do so just by this one line of code. So every upcoming system is literally the same thing. This is just our indicator to talk to one or the other or to multiple objects if needed. So you need to define and decide later on, of course, what you want to do, right? So let's test this one out. I go out of maximize and play wherever that is. Uh, it should be... I, I don't think that it is actually um, available at the moment. So uh, also I want to go and uh, go and take my game object here, go to debug mode again. So we see that is happening or what is happening when I take this cube here. Oh, I believe I need to go into scene mode, but that's easy. So I switch back to scene mode just for the sake of testing. And I'm going to drag this object now here once. I don't have any debug lines, so it doesn't really matter for me, but I can go here. And you see, I entered this first cube once and I lost 15 score because of the script of the score. If I take this one here and go in one, two, that's it. Nothing fancy else. We can go to the score manager game object and see now we have a positive value of five. So this is the build up about anything in kind of score. Now there's a second way, I want to show this pretty quick, where you don't even need an object inside your scene about the score manager, so you don't care about anything. What is the difference? The difference is we don't use mono behavior, we don't use any awake method, or even one of these uh, singleton design parents, they are just not useful. We just don't need them. How do we set this one up? Well, first off, Let's get rid of this piece. Uh, what was it? what was the shortcut? Uh, what was it? Shift and nope, that was the wrong one. Uh, that was the wrong one as well. Uh, I had a shortcut somewhere. Was it uh, control? Yeah, there we go. Control and hashtag uh, or hash. So um, with control hash, I can. Uh, I'm using Visual Code uh, Studio Code over here, so that's why it's a bit new for me at the moment. Never mind. What do we need to do is we need to make this one a static variable and we get rid of mono behavior. We're going to get some quite some interesting things. You can see I don't have any of them nam namespaces active. They are not necessary. And this game object will tell me, hey, I cannot put the script onto this because the console now is telling you, hey, there's no definition for the instance because we are not using the instant as instance at all. So... But when we, when we build something like that up, we need to debug the score like after we got score. Let's get rid of this game object. So we don't use that. And we need to update our score, this script here, the score script. Because now the actual, the, this instance, we, we just got rid of it. We just deleted it. That's why it's red underlined. Now I got rid of it. There's no instance anymore in the scene. Never ever anymore in the scene. If I now do it like that, it's gonna tell me, hey, this is impossible because I'm trying to access a non-static field or uh, actually a non-static um, function from this point but we are trying to access this being a static one to change it, to update it. What do we need to do is we need to add the special keyword static here. So it's a public static void. So we should be able to access this from this point. But what we also see that this, this score here now is now converted. Now you can see no red underlines anymore, but this function over here is now a static function. So we can talk to the score manager without having it in any scene. It's just somewhere. It's a static temporary parameter. So whenever we need it, we're gonna, uh, can, we can actually access it. What we want to do is whenever we do add score over here, I want to do the protection piece here as well. 
gonna put a debug line. The first debug line I want to put in here, if the score would be negative, I would be say debug.log. You can write log files at any time. You can also put in print messages and stuff. Debug.log not enough score. And then we can put in an argument. Oh, damn it. I forgot the quotes. Quotes first. So not enough score. And then we can put out whatever the score, the current score is, plus uh, I'm gonna leave a space here. Plus, uh, maybe I can also do something like uh, colon current current score. Or, I don't know, whatever. And then we can put in the actual, we can output the actual current score. So the debug line knows how much do we got at this particular point. And if we do not catch this area over here, because we are not under zero, we just want to see uh, what is the current score. So we can just, I just get rid of this piece. Current score is equal to current score, or actually plus equal to blah, blah, blah. Bobbity boop, schmobbity bloop. Save. And basically, if we want to talk to the other ones, like we want to read the score, uh, check if a score has been reached, we're going to take a look probably in a second as well. Um, we can, oh no, we have to put them to be static members here as well. So static car functions, so we can access them. We can access the bool, we can access the integer, just by calling again score manager, and we can instantly say also something like score manager dot, we can get the current score, we can... Um, uh, check if the score has been reached and get a true or a false and we can debug that and so on and so forth. And based on that we can decide what we want to do. We can also remove scores separately without only using add score. But add score is going to be now more versatile, more, more useful because we don't need to work with negative numbers and stuff like that. Or with uh, positive numbers to confuse ourselves with negative numbers. I hope you got this. Save everything. Should be good to go. And now we have a uh, a script which is accessible from anywhere. We're going to wait until the compiler is done. We don't get any argument out of range exceptions. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Console is clear, automatically clean up. Now let's test out the same thing, the same scenario. We're going to take our cube now and move into one of them cubes. So go to the scene view. We should see something down below in the console. So I move it here, boop, and you can see I don't have enough score. The current score is currently negative 15 because it's triggered before the actual um, uh, reduction, literally, before we just uh, put it back to zero. And then we see the second line is our current score is zero. And you see there's no object in scene for this, yeah, for the system, for this object. I can go in this one. I can do again, again, again. You can see now my current score is 40. I can go here and reduce this by 15 automatically. You can do the same thing once again. Uh, hopefully I'm going to hit this. There we go. Now we should have, or we would have a negative score of 5. Why ever? Probably I was hitting it one twice. I can try to go multiple times in here. Oh, because they are collapsing uh, my my... Uh, information gets collapsed, that's why. So, as you can see, a scoring system can be its own unit unrelated, unrelated to any other object. What you just need to make sure is that your project contains the score manager script. That's it. And of course, one access point. So the access point in any object, in any coin, in anything else in a button and so on oh there for the button there's one issue now if we would go and create a button to and try to access score manager well that's what we want to take a look at pretty quick because some um games need need a button right so for getting score like uh you find a hidden object um which is a type of button so you can click on this even if that is not really necessary but but let's try that out so just for curiosity how can we now access that gonna put a button anywhere go out a bit see where it is and in this on click event of this one button how would we now access the static the, because this this object is not in the scene 
it's just not in the scene. How do we access this uh, right now? How would you think you're going to access this? So first of all, I go back out of debug mode. So it's easier for me. It's not so crowded over here. Okay. Who is the object we want to talk to? Let's try to put in our score manager in here. Let's see if we can talk to anything. You can see it is empty. So what is what do you think is the best and easiest way to get this running? If you want to click this button and get some score, or lose some score. Well, you can use the score script, but instead of using the on trigger event, you just create an access point, a normal public void, uh, you know, function for the button as we had before in the other in the score manager itself. Or you extend it, but it's not impo uh, not possible, literally, because we got rid of the mono behavior. We just don't use it. So the best way is have one script which has all the access points. A In this case, once again, a public void. And you can call it, I don't know, click a button. Click a, a button, whatever. Just name it whatever, so you find it. And you can put in an integer again to the score you want to get. Score to get. You can name it again whatever you please like. In this function now you want to talk to score manager and you want to add score and what you want to add is the score to get and then you are done. Now let's put this onto our button so this click a button script or function in this case can talk to our score manager. That's the literally the final step. So we have literally everything, uh, I believe so, connected to that. So I'm going to go to my button. I can put the script directly, the score script directly on this button, like so. So we got my score over here, but we don't want to use that. In our unclick event, we're going to take the our own button, this one button. We want to talk to this one button and we go to score. And what we want to do is we want to go for and click a button and we can put in our integer here. So basically we can just put in a 10 or a 15 or any number. For this one button we want to add 15 score. Let's try that out. Of course you can have multiple buttons, right? So positive and negative buttons. So in game view I click on this button and in the console I get an information. My current score is 15. But this button has no relation to score manager because, well, it just talks to it and flings anything in, into the score manager in a temporary container, I should say, which just holds one integer and all our information about the actual score. Last one thing is if you have multiple characters or if you have multiple players, like you have a two player game or four player game, you can do the same thing. You just need to give your players some kind of an ID. And then you can uh, tell score manager, hey, uh, each of them, single players, have their own, um, their own score. The easiest one is we can use uh, these IDs directly on the score. So you just create four or two static fields. For example, I'm going to do it like this. And then we can say, okay, this is player one score, player two score, whatever, whoever the current player is. Like if you have a turn-based game, then it is player one, two, three, four, and so on. Basically, uh, if it is not a turn-based player or, or turn-based uh, scenario, then of course you can uh, extend this even further down. You can put them all into an array, in a list, into whatever you please and like. Um, but again, you decide later on how you want to extend and reuse this information. If you have a four player game, doesn't matter. And so on. If your player classes are bigger, like bigger in the case of there's multiple things inside, then use the plain class over here, make it static and then access it from anywhere you need. And you can also um, pass the information from the score manager directly into any other class. So how do we know who is the current player? Well, using this ID system, as I said, for example, the ID is going to be just a number, one, two, three, four. And this ID, I'm going to name this one uh, player ID, for example. And I can now say, hmm, 
who do I want to put this information right now, uh, this information into? Well, what is the what is the name of the integer? What what is the the variable we want to talk to? Well, basically, it is player plus ID, something like a uh, player one. But in our case, we need to kind of find a way now who is the actual player ID. By the way, we can also, uh, like we can't say player ID is going to be named player1. So we can literally say player ID is the one which gets that information. So, but uh, we don't really know uh, at this particular point who, who that is because player ID gets the amount right now. We want to get it like uh, player1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we need to compare. We can make a switch. We can make any kind of an other argument. Uh, we can put it into a string and convert it back to an integer, something like that. Um, and we should also be able to extend that so we can name it player, like as being a string name, and then we put in the ID from here, here into this variable. So we need to temporarily catch the information about it. So. And this is basically what we want to do, what we need to do when we go and extend this over a bigger scope, let's say. Um, so we just need to fiddle it out. If you're gonna, if you don't like to use the static variables once again, you can also make a static, let's say, player array, player one to three, and each of them gets just a single ID, which is way easier um, than uh, converting the name first and stuff like that. In that case, we create a static integer array. Like so. So these are going to be my players. We can define it already to be a new uh, int array. Uh, I believe so we can define a size. Uh, is that wrong? Probably. That should be uh, wrong. Where is my... Where's the square brackets? There we go. So we define, we got a player array um, of a size of four. So we can get literally get rid of this one. And now we can, the player ID is going to be always this argument over here, minus one. Minus one because an array starts at number zero. So in that case, we can say players in square brackets and this is basically this player player scores. Let, let me name it player scores. So uh, this is the player scores. So and each single ID has its own player, literally. So player scores. Do I have a typo? I don't know. There we go. And and here we're gonna put in player ID. So the incoming ID. And if it is ID 1, it is not player 1, but it should be player 0. So we negate it by 1 just in case. Like if we have a player 1 over there, then we're going to tell, hey, this is going to be um, uh, because he is at element 0. So you don't confuse yourself. And then you just do copy-paste. So if the player scores of the player ID, whoever that is, going to be minus 1. If his score is smaller than that, we're going to reset it to be this, and we can also spit out the current score of this one particular player, literally. Um, and of course here, we're gonna do the same thing. We just debug the score over there. Same thing for all the other ones. If we wanna compare, we're gonna read from the corresponding information. So in that case, we're gonna, if we wanna remove it, we wanna remove an X amount from, and now we're gonna put in again, any kind of a player ID. I'm gonna keep them the same name, so probably it's easier for us for copy and paste later on. And now we're gonna take the same thing with the same argument. So if that is that, if that is that, and so on. Here we wanna return, and if we wanna get score, we also need a player int ID over there. Of course, we wanna know who we are reading from. So we're gonna we need the player ID to read from the player scores out of this array. Same thing here. We're gonna go and we wanna compare the current amount or the necessary amount by the incoming uh, player ID. And then we read this from here instead of that. And if it is bigger than the uh, actually requested amount, then we are good to go. We control C, uh, control S for a quick save. And now everything is good to go. 
So there's one more thing again. I got a ringing the bell. Gonna be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back. So, um, th there's one more thing, one more flaw. Literally, we cannot use um, the on-click event or the on-click method this way on the button. But we can do this for, uh, yeah, basically what we need is the actual ID on each of them characters or of each of them boxes, uh, at least for the player itself. So, uh, we need to know who is that guy? Who, who is it? What is his ID? And who do we need to talk to and who do we need to send the information to? That's why these two um, are not really working the way now. So how do we do this? Whenever we access it, we need to know what is his ID, like when he enters this area. Who is his ID if he enters this way? And this is pretty simple. The same way, literally. So in score, the score itself does not know about the actual ID. So who is the ID? And who gets this information from? And so in that case, we need to read the information from our characters themselves. In that case, before I do anything else, I'm going to go and create another uh, simple, just simple thing. I just create a player class. Basically, you can do that your way. You probably have a player class already. And... You need to put this onto your object, like onto your player itself. Of course, there's the movement and there's all the other good stuff. Can add component class because cannot be found. Funny, probably that the compiler has no fun on these errors. So uh, what I want to do is I want to implement, uh, for the moment at least, and a temporary integer over here. Uh, temp, temp ID. And I'm gonna put temp ID in here as well. Need to put a comma, temp ID. So we don't get any of them weirdness. Hopefully, copy, paste. Uh, temp, temp ID, of course, we need temp ID here for the click button, at least for the moment. And we need a second argument for the actual click button. Um, and this is uh, dependent later on on something different. So, what is the issue now? Ah, uh, there's... Uh, let's, let me make it a zero over there. So, probably that's why. Because it's local and local needs to have at least any number. Okay, so we got the uh, errors at least for the moment are gone. So I can comp uh, I can uh, compile the player script and can add it to my to my little character thingy. Okay, so we take player, put it here, and currently it doesn't have anything. So I open this one pretty quick, and we just give it a public. Once again, it, uh, we don't need much for this. Public int my ID. So you're gonna put handle out these IDs later on when you create the characters. It can be anything, any kind of ID, uh, literally any kind of ID, except um, for this array. The array needs to start at zero, of course. So my ID, we can put this onto our player and we can tell who we are just with that one number, with that one ID. If you want to, you can also use a GUID, that's uh, this generic uh, I don't know what they are called, um, which is basically just a string parameter and compare it to this as well. Up to you. So let's assume this is my ID is 3. It has to be at least somewhere between 0 and 3, but it cannot be higher because the size of my array is going to be just that. So this this object here in this uh, little score script just needs to know who is that guy. We need to read its ID from this player. I simplify this process pretty quick. Um, because I'm probably running out of time soon. Um, what does it mean? We want to go and get from the uh, from the collider 
we want to grab an information. Uh, let's grab the information first. Col.getComponent of type player. So, what do we want to get from this? We want to get the ID, we want to compare it. So, first off, we want to check if that uh, Col is not equal, or actually, we need, no, we need to put it into something temporary. Player, uh, whoever, player whoever is equal to get component over there if whoever is not equal to null not uh, it to be inside not equal to null so we found a player script on this one particular object whoever has entered uh, the sound trigger event then we're gonna grab from player the temp ID um, in that case we need to take temp ID and put it above the player uh, the player request so we can now set temp ID temp ID is equal to whoever no whoever whoever dot uh, what is it called my ID whoever dot my ID and now we can do the same thing we just simply talk like first we identify who is that is he a player if not, he's skipping the part. Uh, same thing here, we want to skip this part as well. Control X, Control V. So I cut it, this one out and planted this over there. So only if there is some player uh, hitting the zone or hitting an area or going or stepping back or getting into anything, we want to first know who is he um, or who is the current player based on the game manager, for example. If the current game manager knows about this information, then you talk to that. Who is the current player? Give me the back this ID. So basically, game manager dot instance dot get uh, current player or something like that, or get get current player ID. And then we're gonna add score or reduce score to whatever this particular field is made for. Uh, so it's literally, the same thing happens later on on to the on click button. So there's one more flaw on our debugging purpose uh, because, well, should work, but we don't debug for each of them single players. But we, we should be able to see something at least in the console. So when I move now this character inside this area, we get an index out of range exception. And why is that? Probably because the array is empty. Array out of bounds. How can that be? Uh, uh, was outside of the bounds of the array. Hmm. Do I need to tell them that they are all zeros? I don't, I don't think so, but... Hmm. Is that even possible? Ah, uh, so many typos. Ah. Uh. Type int cannot be... How do I do this? Uh, I, I believe it was something like that, wasn't it? Do I need to put this around? Ah, I always forget this. Uh, syntax error. What is what? Is, what did he request it? Oh, the other parenthesis, probably this one. Ah, uh, why is that still here? Huh. Let me pretty quickly take a look. Uh initializer by the way that's what you should learn as well initialize an array uh, use your favorite uh, search engine and find how you want to initialize an array or an array variable or multiple variables um uh, probably in c sharp c sharp gonna take a sec uh, well, I did it correct, at least the first and the second time. So probably I... No, 
Ah, uh, this this Visual Studio Code is just bleh. I just don't like it. I don't know why. Okay, we can also try to do it this way. Let's see if that gives me still an error, or maybe my number is too high, which doesn't make sense. But now it should be filled. Maybe I need to fill this at start. Um, or initialize that at start. Index out of range uh, for this one cube. And if I go here, get the same thing by going in and out. It's trying to add score, but index was outside of the bounds of the array. Pretty interesting. Uh, do I got a typo somewhere? Well, if the ID is 3, what is the ID? Let's debug the ID. Probably there's something wrong from whoever or from whoever ID. Uh, let's see. Uh, debug the blog temp ID. Maybe it didn't, didn't override it correctly, which shouldn't. Just to make sure there are no issues with that. Yeah, debugging another thing uh, you need to consider whenever you start creating your new project and stuff, it always stuff happens you never see before. That's funny. Now I got my three and now I don't have enough score and uh, it, it does what it should. Why is that? It only does that when I put a debug line in here. How can that be? Let me... Let me try again. Maybe I forgot to save. That could be. Let's try again. Without this debug line, so probably I uh, I hit a bottleneck, but it shouldn't. Uh, actually, no, no, it's right. Pretty good. So, as you can tell, with accessing them arrays, uh, like by just using a simple ID, it doesn't matter if it is an on-trigger event or anything else, it doesn't really matter. Um, same thing for this temporary ID, whoever this ID is later on, you need to fiddle that out. You can say something like, uh, once again, if you've got a game manager, just read the current one and put it into this temporary file. This would be something like a temporary, uh, or uh, let's say something like uh, game manager dot car uh, instance dot current uh, player, or probably you have this in score manager somewhere. It doesn't really matter. But for that, or with that simple settings, you can create player scores. You just need an access point or somewhere to read it from. Like if you go and uh, wanna uh, use the on trigger enter functionality, that is possible in this particular case as well. If you have any questions for this one particular topic, please feel free to ask right now. I'm gonna make a little break and then uh, I'm going to be finished with that live stream and I hope you enjoyed this one so far. So, I believe, no questions. Well, I hope you understand this. If you have any questions in the future, feel free to go down below in the video description. There is the uh, Discord server I just built up. And uh, so we can connect. Uh, and you can connect to other people as well. You can talk to them, talk with them. And uh, maybe help yourself and help others if you have any, f yeah, anything you can help them with. And of course, let's increase the community quite a bit. Of course, you can still hire me for your particular project. Just go to my website, octomangames.com. Hire me, just contact me over there. And i gonna try to help you out as best as I can. I hope you get the idea about these little system packages. You build something for something else and you can... And this is the cool thing about this uh, static one. You can just take this class, throw like this C-Shop script, throw this into any project you got, and then you have literally a static, 100% accessible from any time, from any game, object, and so on and so forth. And anyway, you just need to fiddle if you need multiple scores or just a single one. 
You can, by the way, switch that probably also using an enum or something like that, but doesn't need it. Um, so you could just uh, redefine. Or you just put in some more functions with the old or the one-time version, literally using the uh, system we were building before with the current score at this particular case. And then you have like two systems. One is for single player and this one is here for four players. And then you can also put some more um, functions in here where you only have two players. Like uh, there's a player scores with two players or four or three or whatever the amount is or 10 or 100. And then you put just this content into the static integer array. I hope you enjoyed this live stream. I'm ending this one for today and I hope to see you more often in the future in year 2022. Probably you're going to be able to release something um, in this year. If you do so, uh, feel free to throw that into the Discord and let other people know and let me know what you're currently probably working on. Share some projects um, uh, and so on and so forth. Just to uh, keep with the rules or, and stay with the rules and everything will be good to go. Have a good one. Enjoy year 2022 as best as you can. Stay healthy and stay cool and talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.